Recently, we all saw this. So the Chinese have just launched their Carrier 003. We have already discussed this on the channel quite a lot, but what's interesting is that there are several other carriers either being planned or being built or in the process of being launched in the world. And this is particularly true if we consider also light carriers. And among the countries that are designing and building aircraft carriers, there is France. On the 8th of December 2020, French President Emmanuel Macron announced that France is going to build the PANG which is actually a French acronym that means Port Avion Nouvelle Génération. It will be a large nuclear supercarrier built entirely with French technology. The carrier wing will comprise the new FCAS and neuron-derived UCAVs. It will be the largest warship ever built in Europe and it will be a sight to behold. Why? What? Why does France need a carrier, sir? Um, uh, 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 well, the friend, uh, obvious, well, obviously, um, Otis, don't you have anything else to do? No, sir. Uh, Otis is right this time. We love delving deep into military hardware and carriers are the largest piece of military hardware in existence, but the question remains, why France does have a carrier? Well, I confess I didn't ask myself the question before starting the video, but now I want to understand. When I was a boy, I learned France deploying two carriers, the Foch and the Clemenceau, and I was fascinated by these two ships that were so different from the American carriers everyone was talking about. They were so small, and the carrier wing was so interesting with the Etandard first, and then the Super Etandard later, and the Breguet Alizé, all aircraft almost unknown abroad. Well, to be honest, the Super Etandard will go on acquiring some fame in Argentinian and Iraqi service. Yeah, but this is a different story. And how to forget the 35 years long career of the F-8E-FN, that particular special version of the Crusader that was acquired when the F-4 was already entering service, but it was too big for the French carriers. And after that, the French made the excellent choice of going with a nuclear-powered replacement of these two carriers. Originally, two were going to be built, but all the teething problem that the current Charles de Gaulle had when it was first launched actually led to the cancellation of the second ship. For some time, the French toyed with the idea of actually building something that was not that much different from the current British carriers, a program that was called as PA2, but that was cancelled anyway. And now the French are going with the PANG program, and this is for real. So it definitely seems that having a carrier is essential for the French. The easiest and honestly lazy answer to Otis' question is that the French are doing this for national prestige. But this is actually ridiculous. That would really be an enormous waste of resources. Keeping the national shipbuilding industry busy would also be a good reason. That wouldn't be the first time. But they don't really need this as well, because, well, they are building ships at a reasonable rate. And for the nuclear part, they are basically renewing all their fleet of nuclear submarines. So they already have a lot of work to do. So it seems that the French think that they really need a carrier. And maybe the specifications are going to tell something more. The Charles de Gaulle is going to be decommissioned in 2040. So in 2018, and not a minute too early, they have started a preliminary design and concept definition stage. In December 2020, the PANG program has been announced and the carrier is expected to become operational in 2038. The plan is for a 75,000 displacement ship 
which is about 25-26% smaller than a Ford Carrier, but not much smaller than a Nimitz. It is going to be 300 meter length with a beam of 80 meters. Respectable dimensions. About the power plant, there will be two 200 megawatts nuclear reactors that they will power the screws and they will also provide the electrical power to the ship. It is less than a Ford, but pretty much on par with the Nimitz. It doesn't seem a lot to me, so it is well possible that a more powerful version of the originally planned reactors are going to be installed at the end. France has a well-developed nuclear power plants industry. They have been building nuclear submarines for decades now, so certainly it's not going to be a problem to produce an adequate reactor for the ship. Carrier is expected to have three catapults, and this will be the only piece of technology that is not going to be national. In fact, they have already announced the intention to acquire the American EMALS catapults for the PANG. EMALS, when they work, definitely have some benefits if compared to steam catapults. And by the time the catapults will be acquired, we may expect that the American technology is going to be mature. The carrier wing is going to include about 30 FCAS and about 20 Rafales, or in place of the Rafales, UCAVs derived from the French Neuron program. Yes, I know technically the Neuron program was a multinational program, but come on, it's basically a French thing. And for those who don't know what the FCAS is, well, it is the sixth generation fighter that is currently being developed by France, Germany and Spain. It is one of the two sixth generation projects that are ongoing in Europe. As usual in multinational programs and particularly those including France, there is always a lot of discussion about who should do what and what is the exact configuration. For example, a naval version is interesting for France, but the Germans and the Spanish couldn't care less. Moreover, the French are always concerned about keeping all the most advanced technologies within national control, so giving away the family jewels is probably going to be a problem. At this stage, the program is making some headway, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were further hiccups, and at some point the hiccups would be so many that would bring to the cancellation of the program. Actually, the Anglo, Italian and Swedish Tempest program uh, is way less problematic. Also, please note that a Super Rafale, something that stays to the Rafale like the Super Hornet stays to the Legacy Hornet, is within realm of possibilities. If the salt was left loose to that, it will probably take a few years. I know that some of you will be thinking, is France going to buy the F-35? The answer is no. The French are simply too concerned about their national sovereignty and their national industry to buy an aircraft like the F-35. About the UCAVs, well, the Salt has already some experience that was built during the Neuron program, which was technically a multinational program uh, involving various European countries for designing and building a prototype of a UCAV capable of uh, autonomous operation driven by artificial intelligence and so on. The the program in itself was relatively successful, but like many other UCAV programs, it has been shelved after the end. So we may expect that from the PANG that they will start developing uh, something from that platform. The problem has been already studied, it will require obviously updates to the sensors, the technology about self-driving has advanced, also the aircraft in itself will require a new engine and it will require some working weapon systems. So this seems to be a serious carrier, very capable to execute the same missions that the US carriers are executing. And from this point of view, the task is always the same, power projection. What I think is remarkable is that this aircraft carrier will be built all with national technology. I mean, the British carriers seem really to be built as a complement to the American carriers. They basically rely on the F-35s for anything serious. 
But in this case, it's all national technology bar for the catapult. And I honestly believe that if the French really wanted to build the catapult, well, I think they could. However, we always have to consider that France is part of the Atlantic Alliance and of NATO. So by the carrier being largely national, they will be capable of operating with other NATO assets in an integrated way. And there is no doubt that it will be built according to NATO standards where those are applicable. For example, the current French carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, has operated for quite a long time in the Indian Ocean providing support to the operations in Afghanistan. There is no doubt that the new Pang will be called to do the same in case of need, but those cruises, those operational cycles had been very taxing for a ship that is small like the Charles de Gaulle and the operation couldn't be protracted because, well, there was just one Charles de Gaulle. And this is the reason why the debate is open for two carriers rather than one. So there is a decision pending, build one or two carriers. And the decision is already planned to be taken by the late 2020s. Why they would need two carriers? Well, it's pretty much obvious. The Charles de Gaulle has been operational about 70% of the times. This means that for 30% of the time, France doesn't have a carrier in case of need. With a good planning, having two carriers will guarantee that at least one will always be operational. However, in France now there is an interesting debate going on. Some think that having just one supercarrier and maybe two or three smaller carriers would be a more effective combination. France has already built a few light carriers of the Mistral class. These are basically LPDs, but they are a very successful design and there is a lot of room inside the ship, so they are very adaptable. They are obviously smaller <laughs> than a supercarrier. They are about 200 meters long and much narrower. But some analysts are thinking if it couldn't be the base for a light carrier project. For example, if the UCAVs would become operational, a single short catapult could be added and you could have the UCAVs operating from that ship. For fixed-wing aircraft, it would be a problem because France doesn't have any this tall aircraft. And as we said before, there is pretty much no chance that they're going to buy the F-35. But we may think that purpose-built version of the Rafale could operate in small numbers from such a small platform. Sure, they need to make the wings foldable. Some are arguing it wouldn't be better to have one supercarrier for important mission when real power projection is necessary and maybe three light carriers that could project a limited amount of power but still could be effective in every other situation. With some good planning, you could have all three of the carriers operational while the main one is not and in any case, distributing the firepower makes it less vulnerable. So let's suppose that in a carrier configuration, a Mistral ship will have, uh, let's say, six Rafales and as many UCAVs, because you have to consider that some helicopters are always needed anyway. So if you put all three together, they are nowhere near the capability of a large nuclear carrier. But France has something that nobody else currently has. I'm going to say something which is not politically correct, but I'm arguing that France is the only European power that has retained its colonial empire. Large part of Western Africa, which were once part of the French colonial empire, still have a privileged relationship with France. They speak French, 
and they are heavily intertwined with the French economy. Some countries completely broke free, like, for example, Morocco or Algeria, but others are still connected with France. Not everybody knows that in Western Africa there are two large groups of countries that have two common currencies whose central bank is basically controlled by the French central bank. And those currencies are pegged with the euro. So they are basically a piece of eurozone that nobody is ever talking about. France still has some military presence in those areas and, well, now is rarer, but they sometimes are involved in military operations in the area. Plus, there is the incredibly important military base in Djibouti that actually controls the access to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. Now, considering the increasing involvement of the Chinese in the same areas in Africa, well, the possibility of the French having to intervene militarily in those areas, well, is not impossible. They will probably have some ground bases available, but still a large carrier could be used in those situations. But this is not everything. There is something else. There is something which is called Overseas France. It is a collection of territories, mainly islands in every ocean of the world, but also continental areas like Guyana or the territories in the Antarctic. There are French territories in the Caribbean, in the Atlantic Ocean, in Polynesia, in uh, Indonesia. France also controls some sub-Antarctic islands, and it is an enormous area, and it is extremely important not because of the land itself, but because around each of those islands there is an EEZ. The EEZ is the exclusive economic zone, which is an area of sea that extends beyond the territorial waters for 200 miles when possible, where the country has exclusive economic rights. France, with this collection of islands and territories, has the largest economic zone in the world. Many of these territories are in areas where where there is a low level of conflictuality, but the development of the EEZ is becoming a cutthroat business. So there is always the possibility that some military force will be necessary for policing these areas. As we said before, France is part of NATO, and NATO very recently has opened the gates to countries that are definitely not North Atlantic. But France, with all these territories, needs to conduct its own international politics, not connected with the Atlantic Alliance, not connected with NATO, but concerned only with their sovereign interest. This is the reason why France needs a carrier. I will be politically incorrect again, but France is a maritime empire, and a maritime empire needs to control the seas. And this is the reason why France needs carriers, because they may well get to the point that their national interest, their national politics will require for France to control the sea around one of those territories abroad or in West Africa. Yes, of course, all these assets will be useful to be integrated with the NATO alliance, but France will need them to pursue their own national interest. So, Otis, this is the reason why France needs a carrier. I understand now. Are you happy? That was a verbose explanation, sir. Good. However, this is not the end because it is important to understand how these new carriers are going to relate with all the other ships that do exist around the world. The American situation is well known, but it's definitely not the only one in the world. So if you want to learn more, please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me. If you want to support the channel, Clicking on those videos is one of the best things that you can do. And speaking about supporting the channel, thank you so much to all the people who are doing that by being patrons or having joined the channel. I will never thank you enough. I bring you all in my heart. If you want, there is a new way of supporting the channel by buying a model from Air Models. There will be an affiliate link below. I will get a small percentage to no extra cost to you. So if you like this video, thank you so much for watching. If you didn't like this video and you're still watching, I really appreciate that. And please don't go away because I will meet you there.